Martin Dan. Umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Today is Friday, and as you can see this morning, I'm starting to work doing some of the finishing on the table for the patio umbrella stand. Uh, I'm doing the planer this morning. I'm doing working with the, the new Bosch planer that I picked up uh, a week or a little, bit, a little bit over a week ago uh, from the building supply store. Uh, so that is my project today. I want to get this uh, into a state where it's almost ready to put the umbrella in. So my only concern today on this is do I have the right circular hole cutters for whatever finish that we're going to use for the top of this. I'm still leaning in between two things, the, the granite uh, or the, uh, the wood, more of the same wood for the top. Anyway, uh, the guys are upstairs. They are doing the tiling again this morning. Everything's looking good. I went up there and I inspected. They're working to try to make sure that the mosaic tile on the top uh, is nice and straight and we have the trim as well as there's enough buildup inside there for that little decorative cover that's going to go over the shower head pipe. So let's go ahead and get today started. So without further delay, let's get today's video underway. end of the first quarter of the morning. Uh, break time, it's a little after 10 o'clock, so the guys are outside taking a break. Let's kind of take a look and see what the tile work looks like inside. Now I will tell you, I had to come up, I had to come up and I had to speak with them a little bit um, because what they were doing, remember, we only have the exact amount of travertine, and that's with remnants, that's with some cutoff pieces, uh, to finish this inside framing of the shower enclosure. So when I walked up here earlier, uh, uh, the, the tiler, we only have like one, two, we have three. We only had three of the two by sixes and we had to fill the rest of them in with some short pieces. So uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. I came up here and he put the three pieces. He put one, two, three. He did all three here. And then with the little pieces, he's just filling in. In the, in the end, he's just filling in the little pieces uh, where it looked obvious that there was a mistake and then we ran out of tile. So I suggested to him, I said, why don't we do it like this? Instead of doing uh, three full and, th and what is it? One, two, three, four, four little tiny pieces on the end. Why don't we do a full piece and a small piece, full piece, a small piece, or a small piece and a full piece, small. So they're evenly spaced. So it kind of looks like it might be by design that we did this and it won't be so obvious. So that's what he's working on right now. Uh, he changed it around and it would probably look better. Small piece, big piece, small piece, big piece. I think that, and I hate to tell them to do it all, all over again, uh, but it's one of the, it's kind of like for you and me sometimes, what might be common sense might not be common sense to uh, somebody else, a uh, laborer that's working on your job. So just keep that in mind when you are having somebody doing some work. Always take a look over what they're doing, oversight, you know, I keep talking about. And if you see something that's not, not right, just suggest it. Hopefully you get there early enough to suggest. Uh, the correction or the way you want things done and it's not already set up where they have to break the tiles. Well, okay, after some rough sanding, the planing, I used the planer and then I did some rough sanding on it. Remember, it's an outdoor thing. If I were making this for inside the house, I would go through each one of the grades, uh, the grits of the, uh, the sandpaper to be able to make that really nice fine furniture. But remember, this is outdoor furniture. And I just used, I think it was a 220 or 230 grit on there. And uh, I think that'll be fine for outside. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the top. I'm going to decide now, I'm going to make a call. Am I going to fill the inside with wood or am I just going to put a piece of granite inside or am I going to put a piece of granite over the entire top? Uh, I'll let you know in just a minute. So 
So I found this piece of granite, the granite uh, residue, and this granite was what was used for the, the area where the grill is. Remember the grill and the sink that's outside on the back porch. Now I got to thinking this would be a great compliment and would be coordinated perfectly for a piece of furniture on the deck back there because remember the deck railing is made out of this composite wood down here and the, le the, the countertop and for the sink and for the grill is this piece. This is leftover from that. I had an extra piece at the end because it was so long. Uh, so I think I'm going to go with this. I normally would do about a two centimeter, between a one and a two centimeter overlap, which would be this overlap right here. But what I want to also do, I got to looking at it, I think a piece of trim work is called for in this spot. And if I did a piece of trim work, I, I only have, uh, right now, this is as much as I can get on both sides. I, if it were a few centimeters wider, it would be a piece of cake, and I could get that two centimeters worth of overlap all the way around. But I won't be able to do that if I use a piece of trim similar to this right here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. Uh, with the maximum amount of overlap that I can use right now, which is basically the width from this side over here to this side. It's real wide here. I don't have to worry about that section. I'm going to cut the piece out. After I cut it out and I put it back down, we'll look and see if we can put some decorative trim up underneath it to just give it a better appearance. Now here it is lunchtime. We're gonna do the halftime report now. We're gonna go up the stairs here. Well, I'm already upstairs. Let's go inside and look how we're doing with the tile inside here. You saw how, how I'm doing with the table. And while it's lunchtime, I'm gonna take advantage of the tile saw uh, back on the lanai back here where it's set up. And I've already got it marked off. I'm gonna cut that granite slab uh, to the octagon shape. And then I'm gonna bring it back downstairs and I'm going to do some finishing with my polisher and then I'm going to find out where the center is and I'll try to cut a hole. I think I have the correct diamond circle cutter for that but uh, I might not. I might have to order it so it might be a delay but at least we'll have it all put together everything except for putting the umbrella in. I'm excited about getting that project done and out of the way so I can move forward. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what's got done up here in the bath. So as you notice, we are employing spacers. I came in here earlier. I didn't tell you about it earlier. I came in here earlier and none of these, none of these gaps between any of this mosaic on this front face right here, none of the gaps were, we had some that were all closed all the way. We had some that were stretched out. So what I did, I gave uh, the tiler inside here. I said, here, please use these. And remember, these are the, these are the spacers that I used when I did the, the tile for the backsplash inside the breakfast nook in the bedroom. Uh, so he, he did that, he did, and it looks great. It looks absolutely great. Now probably somebody's gonna say, I know they're going to say, hey, what happened to the plastic strip, the decorative tile strip that was supposed to go there? And that was my question too when I came in here this morning. But he had already had these two sections installed uh, before we did the corrections with the, the, the spacers inside there. And I said, well, instead of having them tear that down, uh, it doesn't look bad, and it matches the one down on the first floor. I was going to do a little bit of an accent, make it look a little bit nicer than the one on the first floor, because you, you can always do improvements. It doesn't hurt to do improvements. So anyway, he put it in here like that, and that's fine, and he did a good job, as long as it's straight and you have a good grout line. Oh, let's go ahead and take a look at the travertine, how that is done now. All right, so we have the travertine and it's ready. Uh, once that sets up a bit, then he's going to be ready to start putting this tile above it over the top and they'll be able to finish, I, I, I'm hoping, uh, today. I'm hoping most of this will be done today. Uh, if not, 
Definitely, I'm sure everything inside here will be done by Saturday. Well, as you can see, everything seems to be going really good up in the bathroom on the second floor. I'm really happy uh, with the way things are turning out. Again, a lot of the reason why a lot of it's turning out properly is because of oversight. Being uh, there to identify problems, things that wouldn't look right later on. And that's what happens a lot of time that I talk about when you are out of country or you're someplace else and you hire a contractor and you have a design. You might have an architectural design, which you should have an architectural design, uh, but when you show up 10 months later or a year later and you look and it's just things are not like you wanted them. Things are crooked, things are not, uh, the details, the, the attention to detail is not there that you really expected, even if it showed it in architectural design. So good, we are doing great. I'm gonna go downstairs, I'm gonna get some lunch. I need to be done with my lunch before these guys are so I can bring that slab of granite up, cut it out so I can continue working on that table down in the basement. Well, that was easy enough. Taking that piece of granite upstairs to the third floor. It was it was more work getting from the from the basement to the third floor with the piece of tile than it was actually cutting the tile. It only took me less about 10 minutes to do the whole cut for all of the sides on here. So uh, with the with the wet tile saw upstairs, that was easy. It's uh, here, so it has to have three things really done to it right now. I need obviously I need a hole in it but I need to cut a 40 millimeter hole. I don't have a 40 millimeter bit. I think I have a 38 or something like that, but I need a 40. Uh, 40 is what I need for the pole to go through. I might have to order that. I don't, or maybe if I can find some place downtown. Uh, Wilcon did not have that yesterday. They have, they have one inch, one and a quarter, one and a half, but they didn't have uh, the 40 millimeters. Uh, which is about, mm, it's like an inch and, th I think it's like an inch and three-eighths or something like that. So they didn't have that, or maybe it's an inch and five-eighths, I can't remember the exact measurement conversion. So anyway, I have to get the hole in the center, I need to round off the edges, I'll get a grinder and I'll use the polishing pads also with the grinder to do the outsides, and I need to also adhere this or attach it to the base. Uh, and I, I need to see if I have like liquid nail. If I have liquid nail, that will work just fine. I don't know if I have any left over or if what I do have left over is still fresh enough and not clogged up in the end of the, of the uh, tube. Now let me see if I can find the liquid nail or some type of adhesive to go ahead and attach this tabletop to the base. Uh, of course, it will make it a lot easier when I start doing the grinding to have all that weight below it holding it in place. Hey, great. Well, lucky for me, I had a spare a tube, a spare tube of the Sally's liquid nail. And I, this will be just fine. And it's clear, uh, even if some does stick out around the edge, I can smooth it off and you won't see it. Anyway, it's underneath the top of the table. Uh, so you're not gonna be sticking your head up underneath there anyway. So let me go ahead and use this. We'll get it attached. This takes 24 hours to cure. Uh, but I think it will be okay to start doing a little bit of sanding anyway. I don't think it's gonna shift. We'll keep an eye on it.
We see it's almost 4.30 and our Tyler's gone for the day. So let's go upstairs and let's take a look and see where they are on the project inside the shower area, inside the comfort room. Now, I don't think they're gonna be done. I, I think there's gonna be several tiles uh, that they have to do to complete the area for the tiling, just the tiling portion, uh, because I kind of watched them throughout the day. So we'll see how much is left over. Well, I think we have good progress here today. Uh, they, we have decorative trim on the top, which I hope means on the very top is a piece of tile. There is the decorative trim also on the outside right here. You see we have, this is all done. We saw that earlier. I think we saw that after, after lunch uh, when I did an update. So everything is looking good in here. What we have left is around the window frames right here going to the roof. And we have to complete the, the very bottom down here that goes to where the uh, mosaic tile is on the floor. So, oh, and of, of course we have to fill in the bench the, uh, that we're gonna put the granite seat in, uh, the bench with the, the mud inside there. So the, uh, maybe that'll get done tomorrow, I'm not sure. Now I think tomorrow they will be done with the major tiling in this room, in the comfort room, the bath on the second floor. There are two other outstanding items that have to be done, and that's putting a little bit of the mud inside the corner bench inside there. And of course, we have to work on the, the granite for the windows inside here, and that's gonna be time consuming. I think this job for both of these windows is gonna take at least half a day, if not longer. Uh, it's gotta have precise, grinding of the uh, the granite. Now, they can't use the tile saw because the tile saw isn't long enough to do these long pieces right here. So they're definitely gonna have to use the grinder with the four inch grinder blade to be able to cut these pieces out. And that's gonna be time consuming. Now I'm excited that we are closing in to closing out that project up on the second floor in the comfort room inside the bath. Now, we still have a lot of things to do up there, but tiling is the biggest time-consuming project inside that area. We still have to do the lavatory, we still have to do the bathtub, we still have to do the two vessel seats and the fixture, we still have to do grouting, we still have to do, well you can see, it goes on and on and on. But each one of those tasks are, are not nearly as complicated as doing the tiling inside there. It's just installing appliances. So I'm looking forward to that. Now before we close for today, I do have a few shout outs. So let's go ahead and do some shout outs for today. Now the first shout out is an anniversary shout out for yesterday, for September 22nd. And it is for Chuck and Roxanne Burns who are celebrating their second anniversary or celebrated their second anniversary yesterday. So on the way to the two of you, happy anniversary. And for today, September 28th, Daryl Blessing is celebrating his 56th birthday. And last but not least, I have a very, very special birthday shout out. And this birthday shout out goes to my dear sister-in-law, Lillian, Lillian Hewlett. Uh, Lillian is celebrating her birthday today on September 28th as well. And I gotta tell you, she is a very special person. She is warm, giving, caring, and generous. And she, she spreads so much happiness in all of the people that she touches in her life. Well, anyway, she's taught me so many things. And one of the things that she has taught me is that happiness is not in the amount that you have inside your bank account, but happiness is the love that you have inside your heart. So anyway, to both you, Lillian, and Daryl, I wanna wish you both a happy birthday. Well, now that's about it for today. I failed to mention earlier that I decided not to do the grinding and the polishing of the granite top on that table uh, earlier today, after I put that adhesive on there, the uh, the liquid nail. And the reason I didn't do that because when I set the granite on the top of it, I noticed it was very easy to shift. So we're gonna let that cure for 24 hours. And that'll be a project that I'll work on again tomorrow. So let me close like I said. If you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up, please share. And if you have not subscribed, just click on that little My PI Dream heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen. You'll be subscribed and you'll be notified the next time I upload a new video. So until such time, you have a wonderful and blessed day. Mm -hmm.